Hi, this is Andy from Your Car Boutique, and today uh, we're going to be doing a bit of a, a tutorial on all things washing, prepping, polishing, etc. So, this video is aimed at amateurs and beginners. So, I'm not going to be going into things like gloss meters, paint depth gauges, pH scale, and all that kind of stuff. We're just going to have a brief introduction, a few top tips. Um, on this absolutely minging bonnet to show you the process, do's and don'ts and things like that. So we're going to be looking at the contactless wash aspect, so the use of TFRs, citrus pre-washes, etc. We're going to then go on to the sort of the contact element of washing the car with your wash mitt and shampoo. Then we're going to briefly look at chemical decontamination, which is tar and glue and fallout, mechanical decontamination, claying, and then we're going to go on to machine polishing and show you some sort of a, um, terms and top tips etc so um, although I usually do this indoors I thought I'd come out okay just spend 10 seconds listening to the birds isn't that nice okay so best we crack on so before we do any work on this, this is the state of this bonnet, okay, I think it was from an MX-5, okay, it has got all sorts going on with it, it's got water stains, bird lime, it is scratched beyond belief, okay, so it's a good sort of project car, there's some sure what's going on there some weird hazing going on there okay, scratches there's some dents and all sorts going on so what I'm planning to do is once we get going I'm going to give this the full wash sequence okay and then I'm going to mask it up and I'm going to leave one area clean but sort of not clayed or polished okay and then I'm going to do some other sort of a taping up and show you the difference between one, two and three stage polishing as well so this is a good one to do, there's no point in doing it on a brand new bonnet because it doesn't really show you the before and after shots of Tony White okay so that's what we're working with so uh, on to uh, the first step of the sort of contactless wash sequence Okay, so you probably noticed that uh, the weather's taken a bit of a turn, but uh, no, it hasn't. Um, idiot here, while I was editing this video, deleted it, so I had to come out the next day and it's freezing today. So we'll look at um, the sort of uh, first step of the pre-wash stuff, looking at TFRs, okay, traffic film removers and citrus pre-washes. Similar, but very, very different. So uh, the first one we'll look at in, or discuss is some super top tips, and this is quite an important part of this tutorial, is traffic film removers. we put the shades down, it's quite bright. Okay, so traffic film remover, like the, the name suggests, it's gonna remove all that tra traffic film, okay? Now, traffic film removers, you need to be very, very cautious of. Um, I'm personally not a great fan, but I do see their uses. Um, a traffic film remover is a chemical that is going to sort of aggressively and almost indiscriminately strip off oil, grime um, and, and heavy contamination. So if you've got a car that is absolutely minging, okay, um, a traffic film remover might be an option for you. Um, but top tips for traffic film removers, always use the correct dilution ratios. Do not or never apply in hot when the paint works hot or in uh, a direct sunlight okay and wash it off immediately all right because a lot of these tfrs are heavily alkaline or have heavily acidic i said this is aimed at beginners just give me an idea and um, sort of ph scales goes from 0 to 14 i believe if seven is sort of neutral which is most waters um, um to give you an idea a uh, ph um, level of 11 is ammonia level uh, ph 13 is oven cleaners etc some of these tfrs are 11 12 13 14 um, and heavily heavily alkaline so they are really really good at stripping oil, grime, etc. So I do see their, their use. I only use them under wheel arches or if I'm doing a full 
sort of wash decontamination polish wax process okay because it's quick that's why a lot of car washes use TFRs because it's super super quick okay but um, some words of caution um, leave it on too long and it's going to damage your paintwork and indeed on this one I'll show you later on in this tutorial how it's um, someone's left it on too 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 long I, I'm suspecting and it's stained the paintwork it's going to stain your trim your plastic and all that kind of stuff so if you're not familiar with TFRs from a beginner's point of view I would avoid them personally all right so going on to a more user-friendly version I suppose is citrus pre-washes which are a lot um, safer in my opinion whereas a lot of TFRs are quite heavily alkaline a lot of citrus pre-washes are almost neutral so pH 7 or very very slightly alkaline sort of 8s and 9s okay so it's giving you more scope more flexibility um, they are um, very very good um, products okay they will um, sort of remove grime and um, bug, bug splats and general sort of road dirt etc all right but they're a lot safer so I personally would start off with a citrus pre-wash as opposed to a TFR so what they do um, essentially when you're using a citrus pre-wash okay it's a chemical you're going to spray on leave it for a few minutes always read the instructions though and it's almost going to put a, an emulsion around the dirt okay so it's going to actually break down the dirt put an emulsion around it it's going to sort of suspend the dirt in the actual chemical and then when you, you jet wash it off it'll be jet washed off safely without sort of swirls and scratches and all that kind of stuff so it's a very very useful uh, part of the, the pre-wash process because as we uh, as i keep saying the more you can remove before you do the contact part of it i put your wash mitt on the car the more dirt you can safely remove the better and the less the less chance you've got of um, um, scratching your car so um, with both TFRs and citrus pre-washes always read the instructions okay and um, start off with the citrus pre-wash and as you become more experienced and more familiar with the chemicals you're using you may find a need for traffic film removers um, but um, that's sort of my sort of top tip okay for TFRs and, and citrus pre-washes I use TFR for wheel arches but certainly on my paintwork so it all comes down to um, sort of why we should invest so much time in cleaning our cars and putting waxes and sealants on. And this is the way I look at it. Um, whether you use a TFR or a citrus pre-wash, they are heavy sort of degreasants, all right? And there is the scope for damaging your paintwork and plastic and trim. So the more last stage protection you can put on your car, a wax or a sealant, naturally affords you the ability to use a less aggressive cleaner, if you see what I mean. Okay, so if you're on top of your paintwork, etc., you can go for a citrus pre-wash, a pH neutral, nice and safe okay um, pre-wash that's not going to strip away your wax and all that kind of stuff if you use an aggressive TFR or or a super strong um, sort of citrus pre-wash there is the potential to strip off some of that wax layer so you're sort of going back as opposed to going forward all right I'm gonna do a separate tutorial on TFRs and citrus pre-washes but this is just really aimed at the beginners so um, like I say read instructions look at your dilution ratios know what you're, you're doing and um, what you're using um, do not apply it to hot paintwork do not apply it in direct sunlight wash it off straight away thoroughly thoroughly wash it um, and so as the main top tip is keep on top of your, your paintwork keep it protected so you can naturally go to a, a more subtle or a safer pre-wash um, um, chemical various ways of applying um, TFRs and, and citrus pre-washes you've got the little action ones there the handheld ones okay you've got these sort of the bigger ones with the lance okay or some of them like the one I'm going to be using um Stiana Gloss's citrus pre wash cleaner come in a bottle and you just spray neat okay so I'm gonna be using this one um, this one is labeled as a citrus pre-wash but I believe it has a pH of quite high about 13 so it's sort of venturing into that TFR world and the reason why I'm using it on this one is okay it's just um, paintwork and I want to strip off everything because I'm doing a full process on this one so I'm quite happy to use this one I'll be spraying it on I will not be leaving it long <coughs> and I'll be jet washing off straight away so that's why I'm gonna be using this one and it, this is really really good it's quite a potent uh, product and for getting rid of as much as I can all right but that's just because this is in a terrible state it's got no wax no sealant I'm not concerned about stripping anything off in fact I want everything stripped off to give me a base layer for machine polishing and waxing at a later point okay so that's my top tips for it I'm going to go, now go into the warm reload this into my almost fully finished edited video okay and uh, take it from there so uh, on to uh, the video showing this uh, citrus pre-wash in action
Right, so that's it, um, sort of citrus pre-washed. Jen and Dave are both looking at me. Jen's walking past giving me the uh, two-fingered salute and Dave's sticking there, sitting there over the fence with a Cheshire cat grin sticking his tongue out. But I'm going to persevere because, uh, I don't know, it makes these uh, tutorials a bit more exciting, a bit more funny, and seeing me struggle through this process. Right, so that's it, citrus pre-washed. All right, I didn't leave it very long, maybe a, a minute or two, and thoroughly rinsed off. Um, and it has taken, it has made a difference already, okay? A lot of that, that sort of grime, okay, and the sort of surface and some of the dirt has gone as well. So step number two, uh, part of the um, uh, contactless wash. So we we still haven't physically touched the um, paintwork. So um, next step is snow foaming. So what is snow foam? Snow foam is essentially a pre-wash product. It's the um, part of the wash stage before you actually shampoo and, and progress to your contactless part of it, i.e. putting the wash mitt on the, on the vehicle itself. Okay, it's essentially a mild detergent. Its aim is to soften dirt. All right, and you um, apply it um, using usually one of these. You can use the hand sprays, but you get a better performance out of a dedicated snow foam lance um, like this. Product I'm using is Flawless Kiwi and Lime Snow Foam. Love this stuff so much. I'm out of it. Okay, really, really good stuff. Now, depending on what snow foam you use, okay, make sure you use the correct ratios. Most around about the eight to one or ten to one, so ten parts water to one part snow foam. All right, um, but you do have um, a certain degree of control over uh, sort of the, the the mixture, okay, and the and um, sort of um, the spray pattern with one of these. Well worth an investment. All right, and I've done a few reviews on a couple of these, but there's lots of good ones out there. All right, so you're um, applying a thick foam over your car, and there's two neat things to consider. One, you don't want it too thick, all right? You want it thick enough to loiter on the paintwork to sort of have time, usually around about between three and four, and sometimes up to 10 minutes, depending which product you use, to sort of soften the dirt. So when you then jet wash it off, that dirt goes with the foam suds, so to speak. You also don't want it too sort of thick that it does drop off, it doesn't drop off. So it's that, uh, that combination of getting it right so there is a sort of a, a, a slip rate where it's actually falling off the car at the bottom, taking the dirt away, but being um, on the car long enough to have time to sort of absorb into the grime, loosen it, so when you shampoo it and um, sort of jet wash it off, most of that dirt's coming. So in conjunction with either TFR citrus and then a snow foam, the majority, if not all of the dirt, the grit is off. So when you do come to touch it with your wash mitt, you're not inducing scratches. So that's the theory behind it. So I've only mixed up a little bit, okay, a, tape, a ratio of 10 to one using this Kiwi and Lime snow foam. Um, there's loads of snow foams out there. There's colored ones, a bit of excitement to your wash sequence as well. There's lots of nice smelling ones. Some people just prefer a non-smelling white. Um, but I'm all for the coloured ones, as long as they don't stain your car if they're left to dry. Um, but another top tip when we're talking about sort of temperature is keep an eye on the instructions for your snow foam as well. You do not want to be leaving this. I've left snow foam on too long on a hot day and it almost stains the paintwork. Yeah, it comes off, but you don't really want that. So bear in mind your the temperature, the conditions, read the instructions, get your mix ratio right. Okay, and this is a very, very useful step as part of that sort of contactless safe wash process. So uh, let's apply some snow foam to this. So we've snow foamed the paintwork and rinsed it off. The next stage is we're moving on to the contactless wash part where we're physically touching the paintwork. Um, so this is where we're using our car shampoo and wash mitt. Now, um, lots of shampoos on the market out there. Um, you, you'll have your own preference. Um, I always go for a pH neutral shampoo, so I know it's then gonna be safe on my last stage, stage protection, whether that's ceramic, a sealant, or a wax. Okay, because um, I don't want to be doing all that hard work and then every time you wash your car it's stripping some of that protection off. So read the yeah, packaging carefully and, and be careful as to what you're buying out there. Um, so in terms of the wash process and that two bucket method, so you've got a bucket of your, uh, your water with your shampoo in and then a clean, a bucket with clean water in. And the mindset, both with grit guards, the bits of plastic at the bottom, the mindset is you dip your wash mitt into your shampoo wash a bit of your car, it's then contaminated, you then put that into your clean water, rinse it, okay, to so get all the contamination off into your rinse bucket, 
all the grit goes to the bottom and is sort of protected under that grit guard from coming back up. You're then putting your wash mitt back into your shampoo, so it's just a, a another step of safety as part of your, your wash process. Now in terms of um, what you're physically using to wash your car with shampoo, um, gone are the days where we've been using sponges, all right? Um, the um, sort of preference nowadays is wash mitts or wash pads, um, either microfiber ones, and you can get synthetic natural, you can get pure lamb's wool and all that kind of stuff. I use in these synthetic um, microfibers and they're anywhere between five pound and 15 pound. But just make sure you get a long pile one. Um, so the be benefit of these over a sponge, if for whatever reason you've still got some, some grit, okay, or dirt on your car and you go, you wash it with a sponge, okay, you're basically pushing that grit over the surface of the paint. There's nowhere for that grit to migrate to. It can't go into the sponge. The beauty of these, if you do go over your car and there's a bit of grit, it has an opportunity to migrate into the fibres, keeping away from the actual paintwork, so you're, you're reducing the chances of inducing scratches. Okay, so just for information, the shampoo I'm using is um, Flawless Car Care Peach Shampoo. All right, so got plenty of that left, so I've been going to be using it for this. Um, I, I'll be using the two bucket method, but this won't take very long, so I'll just quickly give it a time warp. I always go in straight lines, okay? I very, uh, rarely do any of my detailing with circles. The reason being, if you do induce a circular scratch, it's pretty visible from any angle. If you do have a um, uh, inadvertently scratch your car in a straight line, it's, it's less vis visible. It's only visible to the eye from a certain angle, so that's my mindset behind always going in straight lines. Okay, so I'm going to wash this down, okay? This is the first time, theoretically, we were touching the car. Um, and then we're going to go on to the uh, chemical side of things. So uh, let's let's wash this down. So that's the contactless and the contact wash done, okay, and that's all the road grime and dirt off, okay, so the good thing about this is it's showing up really what we've got to work with in terms of the machine polishing, so there's some nasty crash, cr um, scratches, bird lime, loads of swirl marks, etc. So Although we've used quite a few products, a citrus, a snow foam, a shampoo, right, there is still contamination embedded within the clear coat of this bonnet. So we're now going on to, look at Dave laughing at me and Jen as well, right, the things I do for you guys. Okay, so we're now going on to the chemical part of the washing, okay, so we're going to be using chemicals, okay, to extract nasty bits of contamination in so we're using sort of a range of products essentially tar and glue and fallout sprays okay so people have different opinions on this whether to use the tar and glue before the fallout or the fallout before the tar and glue my personal preference is i use tar and glue first to get rid of that nasty tar before i use fallout sprays okay because i've sometimes found that if i use a fallout Okay, first, okay, it can't penetrate through the tar, so that's my own mindset, okay, but people have got different opinions. Some people do the fallout first and then the tar, because tar does require a bit of uh, touching the paintwork, so it's your own personal preference. So the first one I'm going to look at um, is the tar and glue remover. Okay, so first of the products we're going to be using for the chemical decontamination phase is tar and glue remover. Now, all the citrus pre-wash shampoos, um, you're not going to be removing sort of stuck on bits of tar. So um, rather than machine polish over them, which is going to damage your paintwork and in, um, sort of reduce the capabilities of your compounds and polishes, um, if you are going on to sort of... Uh, um, claying and machine polishing, this paintwork needs to be chemically um, decontaminated and super, super clean. So, tar and glue remover. If you go and look at your car um, behind the sort of the, the wheel wheel arches, you'll see little specks of, of black. That's tar, and it needs a chemical to remove it. Um, now, you can either sort of do it localized, okay, just spraying a bit on, but this bonnet is covered in it. So, I'm actually going to um, apply the, the chemical to the whole bonnet. The couple of, uh, that I am using at the moment is Alien Magic's tar and glue remover um, um, and the Clay Cloth Company's tar and glue remover. Um, in terms of strength, I find I found this is one of the strongest ones um, that I'm currently using at the moment. So um, the process for this is spray it either on a localized area or over, over your whole panel. 
and on a sort of an upright you'll you'll st see the chemicals start it'll start eating away at the tire and you'll see it actually tracking down a bit okay but you're not going to get that benefit on this one now sometimes if it's like tire contamination um admin jen has just stuck a broom handle in my field of view with hi and a big smiley face so thank you very much jennifer and she's now nodding the broom okay so i'm going to just carry on i'm just going to carry on where was i i was talking about tire and glue wasn't i okay so we're going to spray it on um leave it for a few minutes okay and if you find it hasn't dissolved it away just get a a a safe um sort of closed loop short microfiber towel and just agitate it a bit okay you don't want to be pressing hard because you don't want to scratch your car but it might need a bit of ag agitation if it doesn't come off straight away reapply the tire and glue remover and then do it again but like all chemicals um wear your gloves all right and um, certainly with some of these stronger chemicals like tar and glue, if you are working up close, a bit of eye protection as well. Um, I'm wearing these to protect my eyes and to look as cool as I can. It's not working, is it? Right, okay. Um, don't let this stuff dry on as well. Okay, this will sort of stain your, stain your paintwork as well. So make sure you thoroughly, thoroughly rinse it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it all over. I'm going to leave it for a minute or two on a time warp video. And I'm going to get a, a an old cloth because once I use a cloth with this stuff, I bin it. So I use an old cheap one, but a safe one. Um, I'm going to get my cloth just agitates and harder spots. Okay, and then I'm going to thoroughly, thoroughly rinse it all off as well. Okay, so um, tar and glue remover. Okay, let's uh, let's do it. So groupsters, I'm not going to time warp this one, all right, I'm just going to show you, so because I've got a large pan on it's covered in tar, okay, I'm going to spray it all over the panel, but like I said, you can do a localised area if you've just got a, a bit of mark contamination, and this stuff smells really, really strong, okay. and then you're just leaving it um, to sort of uh, do its thang as they say so the chemical will naturally start breaking down the tar and like i said you'll see it on uprights it starts dripping off okay now the other way you can do it if you want to have full control is to apply a bit onto your cloth and just go at this sort of contaminated area okay so you're you're trying to use as little as possible um to get the job done but i've got some sort of hard areas okay of tar i'm just going to go nice soft towel not pressing hard you, you, you shouldn't be pressing hard with any of your products whether that's your clay bar your, your, your cloths okay your shampoos and all that kind of stuff you can actually feel it on some of the hard and that's the harder bit there so I'm just gently and it's all coming off. Okay, so that's most of it off. I'm just telling everyone to be be quiet next door. I think they're having a party in the garden next door. I've told them off. Okay, so that's most of it off. I say I'm only pressing very, very gently, and you can see the black coming off on the cloth as well, so that's good. An important thing with tar and glue remover is thoroughly, thoroughly rinse it off. It is a strong chemical, so I'm happy that all that tar and glue is removed.
And the only additional thing I will say is is that there's three people looking at me now. Well, I'm not going to edit any of this out because it's funny. Um, some people um, do it when a car's wet. Some people do it um, when it's dry. I do it when it's dry because if the car's wet, it's naturally diluting the strength of tar and glue. Okay, so I make sure it's dry. Okay, apply the chemical and then crack off from there. But if you want to do it wet, okay, it probably just take a bit longer to to use. So um, that's the tar and glue phase. Nice and easy. Okay, so the next step of the oh, it's a bit bright. The next step of the chemical decontamination is what they call fallout sprays. Okay, so things like this, Devil's Mist fallout remover, Iron Extreme, Bleeding Rim. Okay, um, lots of them on the market. And um, so, what are they for? So, um, we've cleaned it, done all the process of taking the tar and glue off, etc. Um, but there's still um, contamination. Okay, now these iron removers or fallout sprays are specific, specific chemicals, okay, to target little bits of embedded iron in, that gets stuck in your clear coat. So things like rail dust, brake dust, industrial fallout, all that kind of stuff. Um, and keeping it simple, like I said, I'm sort of targeting this as sort of the sort of a, um, a amateur sort of beginner um, um, sort of level is these bits of iron that continually um, sort of falling in your car. They've got really sharp edges, okay, and they can sort of get stuck in your clear coat. Now, iron exposed to the elements will rust, and those tiny bits of iron will get bigger and thus get more embedded into your clear coat. So your normal wash sequence won't um, won't remove them. It needs something a bit more um, sort of um, aggressive. Now, these chemicals um, essentially target the, um, the the rust, if you will, around those little bits of iron, reducing the size. So whereby, so and then when you jet wash it, it'll dislodge it out of clear coat and wash them away. That's the whole idea. It doesn't get rid of all of them, okay? But it um, um, assists you in that decontamination from all that sort of fallout, etc. Um, and the reason why most of these are called bleeding rim, iron extreme, devil's mist, etc. There is a natural chemical reaction that happens when the chemical um, reacts with the iron. It sort of goes red. That's telling you there's a reaction there. Some fallout sprays don't, okay, but I like the ones that turn red because it's, it's giving you an indicator that you've got iron contamination, okay, in your in your clear coat. All right. So a lot of these say they're pH neutral, all right, and some say they're acidic. Um, but the sort of the way I, I look at it is treat it like an acid. Acid. It might be pH neutral, i.e. pH seven. I'm going too in depth. Above seven, it's an alcohol. An alkaline below seven, it's an acid. A lot of them are pH neutral in the bottle. Bottle. But once you spray them onto your paintwork and that chemical reaction occurs, that is an acidic reaction. So, okay, it might be sort of pH neutral at the bottle, but it is a chemical reaction. All right. Now, most people use these on the wheels. You've probably seen videos um, on YouTube and Facebook about them going red. That's the sort of thing you're looking for. But you can use them on paintwork as well. All right. But um, top tip on this stuff: um, it is a strong chemical. So glasses, protective gloves. Do not let this stuff dry as well. Okay. So read the instructions. Most of the time, you're spraying it on, leaving it for a few minutes for that, uh, for that chemical reaction to start. You can agitate with a brush, a detailing brush. Okay. Just to help the chemical along a bit. All right. But top tip: make sure this fully removed okay off your car brilliant on alloy wheels that's where most of the sort of um brake dust contamination occurs but it does um, um appear on um, your paintwork as well and if you look back on some of my previous posts i did a i think it was a tiguan okay and the, that white tiguan with a whole back end in fact the whole car was just covered all right so i'm going to be applying it to this whole whole bonnet all right and we'll leave it for a few minutes um you probably won't see the, the red reaction but i'm going to use this cloth here to wipe it down with and you'll probably see some red on this if indeed it has got um some common uh, iron contamination as well and um, with all these style of, style of products though sort of test on a test area okay to make sure there's then not any adverse reactions all right and the one i'm going to use okay is the clay cloth company's devil mist although these are really really good and um, this mine opinion is slightly stronger and um will um, make this process a bit quicker okay so uh yeah we'll crack on with the fallout part so this is just a little breakout video okay with the fallout spray removed and see all them little bits there all the dark bits that is the chemical working they're going red there's a few more bits there so that's a little bit of vion the chemical reacting turning it red okay so that's attacking the corrosion reducing the size of that embedded iron into the clear coat so when we pressure wash it 
pressure wash it down. Hopefully the, them bits will be small, small enough to the jet wash away. Well, there's a few other bits tracking. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, but there's quite big tracks there as well. And a few other bits. There you can see it just there. So this whole bonnet is actually covered in lots of tracks. So there's a better bit there, look. You can actually see that bit of iron there and it all tracking away. So we're gonna do the entire bonnet and then try and get rid of as much of this iron contamination as possible. So that's the fallout spray process done now that's uh, you had a quick look on the uh, uh, time warp video <coughs> all that red okay is proof that there was iron contamination in okay and that's the sort of chemical reaction the, the byproduct of chemical reaction okay so lots and lots of iron contamination hence why I had to do the whole bonnet okay but things are looking quite good it's, it's showing up this dark green paint it, it's getting there okay so um, that's really the, the sort of the chemical side done, the tar and glue and the um, fallout spray. But um, it is still not ready, okay? It's still not ready if you are going on to machine polishing now. <clears throat> clearly, if you just want to wash your car, okay, you wouldn't necessarily have to go through the sort of chemical side of it. You could do use your citrus, snow foam, shampoo, dry it down, then put some wax on, okay? But I'm just taking this um, and a few extra steps if you're um, planning to sort of take it um, a bit further. So chemical side's done and um, the next sort of step and um, we're moving away from chemical decontamination to mechanical um, and de uh, decontamination where we're physically having to do something mechanical and mechanical movement and we're going to go on to and um, the use of clay bars clay mitts clay cloths and all that kind of stuff okay so um things are coming along light and nicely um i'm going to show you a bit later but there's a, a lot of staining on this paintwork okay and, and it's um i'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you this is a perfect example of products being left on the paintwork too long this looks like some kind of tfr some aggressive and um, clean it's been left on this paintwork okay but we'll 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 get rid of that okay we'll get rid of that so the next step is mechanical decontamination using clay lubes and clay products so on to the clay barring process okay now um, this might feel sort of new and uncomfortable to a lot of people but um, it's a really really important part of this process because although we've done all this wash and chemical decontamination there is still um, contamination um, embedded into the clear coat okay and the whole purpose of claying is to sort of mechanically remove them okay but um, there's lots of words of caution on this okay um, it's sort of thing that you sort of get a feel for because you can end up doing a bit of damage now um, there's lots of clay products on the market at the moment. Traditionally, you would go for um, one of these, which is a, a clay bar, right? Okay, that's all. It's sort of like a, a resin mixture, right? Um, and it's it's quite tacky, and it sort of works on the premise of stiction. Okay, you're trying to get these 
um, embedded contamination okay um, to um, sort of be draw up the particles out of the clear coat that got stuck in that have, haven't been removed by the chemical side okay so that's a typical example of a clay bar I absolutely love this one it's built up by Stiana gloss comes well packaged okay comes in a nice box you want to keep this clean as possible it's the whole idea all right um, but you can also get these these are fantastic these are clay mitts okay this one's from the clay cloth company and you can get clay cloths as well now I usually use this one for speed okay but um, I'm going to use a clay bar um, on this demo because I want to show you okay how much extra dirt and contamination is picked up um, through this process all right now yeah, you need to need, need uh, use some kind of lubrication with this so, so some people use water some people use shampoo and some people use detailing sprays as well okay which are fine as long as you keep this well lubricated all right otherwise you're going to sort of start doing damage to your paint it needs to glide over so the two that I'm using at the moment are Tenzi clay spray, all right, okay, um, and the Stiana Gloss clay lubricant, and I'm going to use their clay lube system on this one. Um, I really, really um, am, am impressed with it. Okay, so how does this work? Keeping it nice and simple, okay, you are looking for this to pick up any kind of contamination, okay, that is essentially extending from the surface, all right, so you're going to be lubing okay your your surface up all right and you are gently very gently going to be gliding this over and i'll i'll, I'll do a video in, in action essentially what you're trying to do is glide slowly over the, the surface of the clear coat okay and use the sort of stiction of this clay okay to lift out okay the contamination okay bits of dirt and bits of iron all right so top tip number one if you've never done this before do not press hard. If you press hard, you're forcing that, that contamination, that, that potentially these bits of iron into your paintwork and you will scratch it. Now, I'll be honest, it's very, very difficult to do this process without putting some small scratches in your paintwork and there is a skill to this, all right? So I only do this if I'm gonna either hand or machine polish afterwards, okay? That's just the way I do it. And you shouldn't have to be doing this process too often, okay? Because this is a mechanical decontamination. Um, there is the scope for you to cause damage to your clear coat by putting um, scratches in, all right? So um, you'll see me do it shortly. Lots and lots of lube, okay? Okay, um, that, that applies to many spheres of our life. The more lube, the better. And in this case, um, never a true word has been spoken. All right, as soon as you feel it sort of dragging, okay, get some more lube down. I personally use dedicated lubrication um, clay lube because they've been designed for that purpose. Shampoos weren't, detailing sprays weren't, water certainly doesn't, okay. A lot of time and effort goes into um, sort of developing these, so I'm gonna use a dedicated um, clay lube for this purpose, all right. Now you can use this on alloy wheels, you can use it on glass, okay. Um, so um, it's meant to be non-abrasive, this in itself is not an abrasive, okay, but you can see that if you're forcing down hard, it is gonna become abrasive because this, in conjunction with some iron, etc is going to be an abrasive on your paintwork hence why you can scratch it all right so um give it a go don't be scared of it okay but I, I i personally would only be doing this if i'm going to do some kind of polishing afterwards um and if you put some good lsp on okay and um, some last stage protection you shouldn't need to be doing this very often and certainly if you're using chemical decontamination like fallout sprays etc um, hopefully you'll catch it before it sort of gets stuck in and you have to go to these measures to get it out okay so top tip number one, don't press too hard. Top tip number two, lose plenty of lube to stop it scratching, okay? Um, and hopefully you'll be able to draw out the particles. Um, and I've got a funny feeling looking at what we've gone through on this bonnet so far, this is gonna be heavily contaminated. So you'll see me, I always go in straight lines as I've already discussed, okay? So gentle pressure, straight lines, all right? Because if you do go in circles, like I said, a circular scratch will show up from all angles and a straight scratch won't, all right? Um, and you'll see me doing a little bit. I come to a big block. I just fold this up. This might be a bit too much, but basically about three fingers worth. Okay, I'm just going to lay it down and go in small, small steps. Okay, but like I say, this shouldn't be needed too often. Now, to see whether your car needs cleaned, you can use your fingers. But a top tip: my Karcher taught me this one. All right, this is a contamination amplifier. Right, if you do this and run it over your hand gently, that feels horrific. Go like that, I can feel a bit of it, okay, but this really does allow you to feel, okay, in fact, that's quite bad. That's quite bad at all. Okay, so do this, do your clay process, do it again, hopefully nice and smooth. 
As always, if you've got any tips on claying, um, do, do leave it here um, um, in the comments block, but that's essentially it. So I'm gonna start off with a video in slow-mo. Okay, and then I'm gonna speed it up because this is gonna take some time. Um, and um, that's really the end of the sort of cleaning decontamination phase and you're then into your polishing um, or your last stage protection. But like I say, I only use this if I'm going to polish afterwards just in case I am a bit clumsy and I do put little bits, little, little scratches in. So uh, let's do it. So that's the clean done, okay, and um, takes a bit of effort, okay, but it is such a fundamental, excuse me, fundamental part of your preparation work if you really, really want to get that, that top, that top finish on your paintwork, whether you're now going to hand polish it, machine polish it, or even just go straight to a, a wax or sealant, all right, um, but the test is the bag test. And the difference is phenomenal okay it really really is an important part of your process to finish off that decontamination by drawing out those particles and that is nice and smooth if you get to this point and still a bit left do it again okay until it's perfectly smooth because we all know you're only going to get a top gloss and a top shine with your paintwork as smooth as possible okay so just to um sort of elaborate on what I was doing there so um like i said but sort of three finger size okay nice and gentle lots and lots of lubrication if you're going over and it starts to sort of bind to the paint and you see it's sort of leaving a like a white mark okay you haven't got enough lubrication on it potentially going to damage your paintwork okay so what i do is i i fold it get it ready spray some lube onto the the, the clay loads and loads you can't go over the top with it nice gentle straight actions and you can see on this one all right the dirt that's come from that and like i say constant monitoring that if you're doing a bit have a look at it if it's contaminated fold it up again into the right shape make sure you expose a clean part of the clay and keep going and once that's done okay you then back to your clay bar break another bit off and go and go again okay the key is that you don't want to be having a really dirty clay and then carrying on with the process because potentially some of that contamination is is little bits of iron and, and various other contaminations that you are is then you're going to become an abrasive pad all right so you know be quite um, sort of a discipline with your with your work with your clay so um the next sort of step okay and and i'll be looking at this in sort of part two 
of this little mini series is you're then at the decision point whether you're going to be hand polishing it, machine polishing it, or um, putting some kind of coating on it. So um, before I do um, sort of finish part one, the final step, irrespective of what you're going to be doing, is using some kind of panel wipe or um, final sort of um, um, prep, okay, for whatever you're going to be doing next. So the three I'm using at the moment is G Technics Panic Panel Wipe, um, Tenzi's IPA Cleaner and Alien Magic's Prep Pro. And all the purpose of this is we've been using a lot of chemicals and stuff. All right, this is just a final wipe down to remove any residual chemicals or products on the paintwork before you then carry on to your next stage. All right, um, the beauty of these are, um, they're quite volatile in terms of they do vent off or evaporate really, really quickly, so you can't really go wrong. Okay, so that's what I'm just quickly gonna do now. I'm gonna use the Alien Magic Prep Pro for, for this bit. Okay, nice, soft, high, high quality microfiber. I'm not all you're doing. Okay, you're gonna spray on and wipe down, keeping an eye on your cloth as well. So for every sort of half, rotate your cloth. Expose a fresh bit. All right, take some time with this because the more residual product you can remove, the better. Okay, your polishing compounds, your wax, your sealant, I can be able to perform. Let's like say this is just venting straight off. Nice and easy, but equally as important part of the process. Uh, pretty much clean, it's going to go over once more. And another good use of these panel wipes or IPAs are they really do expose the condition of your paintwork. It really gives you an indication as to what really you need to do next. Are like you going to have to hand polish it, machine polish it? Is your paintwork in good condition that you can go straight for a, some kind of protection? So I'm just going to take this off the tripod now. Wiggling. Like I say, that's pretty much vented off and we're sort of getting there. That is really clean paintwork, fully decontaminated. Um, you can see there though, what I was talking about earlier, that is staining from previous chemicals. I think that's some kind of TFR that's been left too long, that's stained into the, the paintwork. Okay, but like I say, it gives us a good indication some scratches there, bird line there, and so I'm going to be spending a lot of time machine polishing. So, part two of this video series is going to be on machine polishing, and then part three we're going to look at some waxes. So, I hope you learnt a lot on this, this sort of mini series. That's part one of the Carboteaks detailing guide for beginners. So take care.